it's actually a decent little car and it says right on the windshield no brakes so i put it up on the lift see nice decent looking little car anyway i put it up on the lift to see if i can determine why there's no brakes and as you can see you know there is brake caliper brake shoes or in this case pads brake rotor come over to this side and what's missing look at that there are no brake pads whatsoever there the piston is pushed all the way out and all the brake fluid has leaked out so it has destroyed this brake rotor and probably that piston as well and the e-brakes are sticking a little bit on the back for some reason the problem with these northern cars are is they get a little rust on them as you can see now there's nothing structural there it is strictly just surface rust but it's also affected the ability of the e-brake to release now i've already put a little pb blaster on the mechanism up in here but when i wiggled the cable it released so i'm backing this off and i'm going to squirt a little down inside there and see if that helps smooth it up some y'all ever heard the term pig in a poke it means if you buy a pig in a bag without seeing it you don't know what you're getting until you've opened the bag well that's kind of the case with these two cars we just got delivered last night so this one's one that was just on the lift and like i said it's actually not a bad car we already knew that it was going to need a rear bumper because we could see breakage in the photographs but the things that you can't see in a picture is little things like the store handle doesn't work don't know what's wrong with it but we'll have to fix that this zip tied mirror we couldn't see that in the pictures the fact that the battery is completely shot we couldn't see that in the pictures this one we could tell that it had a little bit of something here with the front. A janky little front bumper. What I couldn't see was this wrinkle in the hood right here. And that wrinkle up there. So it's going to end up needing a hood, a fender, a front bumper refastened repair. We knew the rear bumper was completely missing. That was an obvious. And it said mechanical. So... When I got in this morning and started it, this is what I heard. And that, folks, is a pig in a poke. All right, guys, we have a local lady, super nice lady, that wants to buy this little truck. And I don't like selling something when it's not done right. And as you can see, it needs some serious help. We have the new rocker panels laying up there. Because of the way it's designed, you can't get to the back side of it back in there without removing the bed. And we're going to replace rocker panels on both sides, which means I've got to get up under here and pull the bolts that mount the bed to the frame so we can get the, the uh, bed off and do a proper job on these rocker panels. than one broken bolt away from a 20 minute job turning into a two hour job. So the back the nut on the back side that's up inside the bottom of the bed has broken loose from its weld and I can't get to it. So I'm gonna have to blow that nut that bolt off and then fix it once the bed is off. bed is off now i can get to these back corners easily to do a proper repair and let's find out what's going on here
Colorado Fire Department County Unit 10910 Tandy Snob Road, 1091 Tandy Snob Road for residential fire alarm. Fire alarm, how exciting! And that, folks, is how you can tell when you have a brand new firefighter. All of that excitement over a fire alarm, including sending an advanced life support ambulance. We are now switching to a thin kerf blade. See how super thin that is? As compared to how thick this one is. This is the one that I was grinding all the little spot welds off with. This one, you can see this mark that I've put all the way around here. We're gonna cut this, cut that one, take that out of the way, put the new one in place, weld it back in, and paint it. And that, folks, is a rusted out, wore out rocker pound off of Chevy Colorado. Alrighty, folks. See what y'all think about this fit. I think it came out looking pretty nice. Change over to a third type of disc. This is known as a sanding disc. It's, um, it's a black stone uh, 60 grit disc. And the purpose of this disc is we want to remove the paint all on these edges here, both on the new rocker panel and on the bottom of the existing cab so that we can weld a good clean weld joint all the way along and get it ready for paint. Right, guys on this side I am putting the same rocker panel on that I did on the other side the difference here is that I've gone with a larger hole to make it easier to weld through and around and then you can see I have marked on the inside of each hole exactly where I need to grind the paint off on this lip back here so I get a good clean weld and I've done the same thing along the bottom 
and you can see that I've cleaned up the metal there and there for the weld. So all I have to do now is take the paint off of this, off of this back lip, get it put in place, clean up along the bottom, and it's ready to weld. I'll give a shout out to Key Parts Incorporated out of Lynchburg, Virginia. This is where we got these rocker panels. When you can pull something straight out of a box and it fits that nicely with no reshaping required, I am impressed. Makes it quick and easy to do this job. All right, it's all welded along the bottom edge. Ground off smooth. Ready for a light wet sanding and paint. Well, that's a wrap for me today. Rocker panels in and ready for paint. Nebadiah King of the Crapper is over here painting, getting a signboard ready. And he's made it that far around with the paint. And over there on that end, starting to look really good. Over here beating on his truck with a hammer like a monkey.